Hi everybody, how's it going today? Thanks for watching another video. Just uh, in our payloader here, I don't think I ever, uh, I think I talked about it some, but I don't think I ever showed you guys. So since switching out the manure solid bedding in our far off dry cow pen and going over to sand, we've been hauling that manure over from our heifer barn, dry cow barn, to our milking cow barn, where we separate the sand from the manure and reuse it. So we have about 10 buckets in the morning and uh, about five buckets in the afternoon that we have to drive over there every day. It's kind of a kind of a pain in the butt, I guess, but I think it definitely was a good move switching that uh, pen over to sand bedding instead of the dried manure solids. We got a little bit of rain last night. So you can see there's a few puddles and not sure how much rain we got, maybe a tenth or two tenths. I haven't looked at the gauge yet. We don't need a lot of uh, rain at this point, but a little bit of rain to settle the dust is okay. We uh, finished sorghum here a couple days ago, sorghum silage, and we still got some of their equipment here. The plan is to start on corn silage Monday, and then uh, the second chopper will start on earlage on Tuesday. The plan was to start on Ehrlich today, but we got a little bit of rain and it sounds like he needs to do some work to that other chopper to get it going. So they're planning to have a mechanic come out Monday and hopefully they can uh, they can get that one going. And we should be going with two choppers uh, by the middle of next week, if that's the plan anyways, depending on the weather, of course, too. But the, the corner on the farm here looks like it should be ready for silage, but we'll see once we get into it a little bit more. It's always hard to judge an entire field just by walking a few spots, but it, all the corn looks uh, like it's pretty close maturity-wise, besides maybe a field or two that are a little behind. So I think once we get going, we should be able to uh, keep going pretty steadily. Not too busy here today, we've got a couple of odd jobs to do. Uh, Cody is on his way with a load of distillers. And I'd like to have him run across the scale. We've um, they finished the scale up here on Tuesday. It's uh, Friday today. So I've got a little bit of an idea how everything works. I'd like to run a truck across it and uh, make sure that I know how the printer and everything works before we start on silage on Monday. So when he gets here, uh, I'll try to get some uh, filming of that. You can see the first truck that run, runs across our scale. And I've got a couple pieces of equipment I need to service today. If it dries out after lunch I'd like to mark out the silage pile on the concrete here and the earlage pile. I usually just use uh, paint to paint lines on the concrete so that uh, everybody knows how wide the pile needs to be so that we kind of keep things straight uh, like it should be. Cody just pulled on the scale here. Let's uh, go see if we can figure out how to print the ticket. We just uh, got his full weight there. Got that printed. I don't know if you guys can really see that very well. But, so there's a display in here, a printer, battery backup, and then this display is outside. I can show you that quick. Kind of muddy here. But... There's We've got that display outside that will be mounted on the wall but we want to put the tin on before we uh, drill through it and drill holes in the side here there's going to be a stop and go light on the outside here also and then in theory if you have that light you can hit the the green light when you've got their weight then they can go right away that's uh that's kind of the plan i guess right now a little bit of a learning experience for for us we've never done this before so we'll, we'll see how it goes but the plan is to weigh every single silage load coming in here on every single earlage load and then of course we'd like to weigh hay coming in that hasn't been over the scale or straw or whatever else and then manure going out once we get to that point i didn't want to hold cody up too much because he's uh he's getting married tomorrow night so they've got some uh, rehearsal and i'm sure they've got plenty of uh, setting up to do today for the wedding we uh me and Taryn and uh, Ian and Eli plan on going to the wedding. Uh, Ian and Eli actually go to his uh, to-be wife's daycare. So we, um, uh, I think Ian is uh, looking forward to uh, going to the wedding. I guess I'm not really sure what he's expecting, but anyways, we'll, uh, 
we uh we've got his uh weights here it did work the way i thought it was going to work or the way i was told it would work so we've got got it figured out so it's showing his uh gross weight from when he came in and then his uh tear and net weight as well plus then it shows the time and date so we uh looks like we've uh we figured out how it works we'll see once we get going on silage still kind of to be determined i guess what's going to be the the fastest way or the best way to keep trucks moving through here we definitely don't want them coming off the truck so more than likely we'll have somebody in here that will be printing the tickets as they go through but the nice thing is we uh, only have to weigh empty uh, either once a day or a couple times a day and it will store that in the system here and then you have to assign an ID to a truck. So if a truck is, says, uh, or if a truck has a number 10 on it, every time they come on the scale, you push number 10 and then push print. And it should, in theory, automatically uh, save his empty weight and then get his full weight and print it off. So hopefully, hopefully that's how it works. And that, uh, that shouldn't be too bad for keeping the trucks moving. But we'll, uh, we'll find out when we get going. It's the next day here getting a little bit of rain again today uh, Wayne's here with uh, a load of alfalfa with wrap bales so these are square uh, alfalfa bales that are wrapped in plastic basically like alfalfa silage in a bale and he's got his uh, uh, chain floor trailer with him he brought it yesterday for the first time this year so he takes a load of uh, alfalfa bales here and then he'll take a load of uh, manure separated manure solids back home they, they don't do this for every trip they uh, they take some here and there whenever it works out for him I think but they had this trailer made so he's uh, he's got a remote control and he can run the the chain on the trailer forward or backwards so he when he loads the trailer he puts the bales on the back and you'll see once I start unloading here he loads them on the back and then runs the chain forward until the trailers full and now when we unload them I'll grab them off the back and I'll run the bales to the back as I unload them. So he's got a remote control that runs that chain so he can stand back here and watch it run into the back. He holds about 30 bales on the load. Kind of depends on how heavy the bales are. I'm not sure how many he's got with him today, but I'm assuming around 30. Then we'll, we'll get him unloaded with uh, alfalfa and then we'll load him up with uh, manure and then he'll be on his way back. We've been uh, buying baleage from uh, Wayne. Wayne is the dad and Ken is his son for nine or ten years now. I think I think next year might be the tenth year that we, uh, tenth consecutive year that we buy hay from them. We did buy some hay from them in the beginning as well. They weren't making baleage yet at that point when we were, the first couple years that we were here, we bought some dry hay from them, I think, at that time. Not a lot, but now we, uh, we buy all the baleage that they make, basically. We have a contract with them. been working good for for us the the baleage is uh, it's a lot easier to make high quality alfalfa and baleage for them because you don't have to let it dry down to make dry hay it's still it's still challenging it's still not easy but at least you take a little bit of that weather factor out of it they don't have to let it lay for a long time I think they typically cut it and then bale bale it the next day So they'll keep the, the alfalfa in separate lots so you can on the on that left stack there I don't know if you can quite see that it says L12 on those bales so L is the field one is the cutting and then two is for uh, 2022 and depending on the size of the field they'll also split the field in half so then it would be for example L1A or L1B for depending on which uh, part of the field it's in and then 
they'll uh, test that separate to try to get uh, as accurate on uh, the batch of bales that they're delivering to us essentially. And they'll, they'll pull a sample uh, on, uh, on the farm at their place and then our nutritionist will also pull a sample here to compare and uh, when we pay we average the two samples to uh, try to get a better average of the lot I guess and to make sure that I mean it doesn't happen very often but it does happen occasionally where one where the second sample doesn't match up with the first sample and we'll retest it uh, a third time just to confirm what was the more accurate number it, like I said doesn't happen very often but it does happen on occasion bit more work because the way he stacks the bales on his trailer he has to stack them this way to get his trailer loaded fully loaded as heavy as he can haul so we have to grab that bale that's on its end and uh, put it down and grab it again but we do get paid a little bit for the manure or we charge uh, Wayne a little bit for the manure so it's it's, uh, it's probably a wash I guess It's uh, Saturday here today. I think I mentioned uh, yesterday when I when I was uh, filming that we're planning to start silage on Monday, and that's still the plan. We uh, we did end up getting a quarter inch of rain here. Uh, yes, not yesterday, but the, the night before, I guess, which was more than I thought it rained. And there is uh, a little bit of a chance of rain here around lunchtime today. But it doesn't look like that should amount to much. Hopefully it doesn't. And we can uh, get going on Monday with silage. We do have to be a little bit careful with the bales on the bottom that we don't uh, tear them up on the chain. But we're, if we're careful, we don't typically rip any, we don't want any holes in the plastic because any, anywhere there's a, a hole, there's going to be a moldy spot on the bale. This lot that he was just bringing now is S is the field, two is for second cutting, 
and this lot here beside it. M is the field, two is for second cutting, and then A is for that section of the field, so there must be at least a B, maybe an A, B, and C, I'm not sure. So that's how we tell the fields apart, tell the cuttings apart, and if it's a big field, tell the different sections of the field apart, because uh, they're all going to test a little bit different, and we want to try to be as accurate as we can when we're feeding it to the cows. So anytime we switch to a new baleage, uh, our nutritionist John has uh, that information and he'll make adjustments to the ration as needed. So Wayne's just going away empty now on the scale and then we're going to load him up with manure and then he'll be uh, on his way. He usually hauls a load a day, uh, typically six days a week unless they're uh, either harvesting because they, they also farm corn and soybeans and then alfalfa is their third crop. So they'll, uh, he'll haul typically most days unless they're harvesting or planting or uh, cutting and baling and hauling alfalfa. So we'll uh, take the bale squeeze off and put the big bucket on, then we'll load him up and then he'll be on his way back home. We're back behind our uh, calving barn where we have the manure, manure storage. Just starting to load Wayne up here with uh, Salt manure. I loaded about 15 buckets yesterday and that he was a little on the light side so he wants to try 16 today. It's nice now having the scale because we can get it dialed in a little bit closer. They have a scale on their farm so he would what we did before was uh, we'd load him up count the buckets but we wouldn't know how much he had loaded until he got back to their place. Now now we know right away. So we're gonna try 16 buckets. We loaded about 12 buckets yesterday and then he was on the light side. He came back and put three more buckets in. We'll try 16 today and see where that gets us. I'd rather load with the payloader because you have a little bit better visibility, but one of the guys is using the payloader at the moment, so this this will do. You just can't really see what you're doing exactly in the trailer. And it's a little easier with the payloader to shake the bucket so you don't spill any. Sixteen buckets in. Actually, put I put sixteen in, and then he wanted me to put a couple more, so we put eighteen in. He's gonna go uh, way right now and see where he's at, and then we're gonna see him again on Monday. It sounds like. I think that'll be it for this video. I appreciate you guys watching, and uh, hopefully we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>